In this lecture, we're going to examine line spectra that is produced by individual atoms. And then we're going to see how we can use the line spectra of atoms to basically disprove Rutherford's model of the atom. So, let's begin by recalling the fact that all atoms emit or absorb electromagnetic radiation. Now, previously we said that inside solids, liquids, and very dense gases, the electromagnetic radiation is emitted as a result of the interactions between the adjacent molecules and atoms that are found in close proximity. Now, what about in a rarefied gas? A rarefied gas is a gas that has very low density and very low pressure. That means the atoms are found very far away Away from one another so they basically do not actually interact. Now in such a rarefied gas, electromagnetic radiation comes from the individual atoms of that particular rarefied gas. So let's examine the following experiment in which line spectrums are formed. So we have the following two electrodes that are connected to the following voltage source. So this voltage source basically creates an electric potential difference between these two electrodes and that establishes a voltage difference. Now this is our glass tube that contains the rarefied gas, a gas that has low pressure and low density. So that means the atoms are found very far away. Now because atoms have charge and because there is a difference in voltage, those atoms will begin to accelerate and those accelerating atoms will essentially release electromagnetic radiation and that electromagnetic radiation can be observed experimentally. And that electromagnetic radiation that is released is known as the line spectrum of that particular particular atom. So, once again, all atoms are able to absorb or emit light. A gas discharge tube, as shown in the following diagram, uses a high voltage to accelerate low density gas. Now, the electromagnetic radiation that is emitted by the rarefied gas atoms can be readily observed experimentally. And through experiment, it was observed that these individual atoms emitted discrete rather than continuous spectrum of light, and this became known as the line spectrum of that atom. Now, this was because each atom basically emits or absorbs only a certain wavelength of light that is unique to that particular atom. Therefore, each line spectrum is basically unique to that particular atom. And we can use line spectras to basically distinguish one atom from a different atom. So, once again, inside a solid, inside a liquid, or a very condensed gas, the electromagnetic radiation that is emitted is emitted in a continuous spectrum of colors. And that's because we have a wide range of wavelengths that is produced. On the other hand, because in a rarefied gas, the atoms are found very far from one another. They don't actually interact with one another. So that means our line spectra will consist of discrete wavelengths as shown in the following two diagrams. So there are two types of spectrums that we have to consider. We have the emission spectrum as well as the absorption spectrum. The emission spectrum basically tells us the electromagnetic radiation that is emitted. It gives us the specific wavelength and frequency of the light that is emitted by that particular atom. And it is unique to that particular atom. Each atom will have its own unique emission and absorption spectrum. So, if we examine the following diagram, 
these dark regions basically symbolize the regions with a wavelength that is not emitted by that particular atom. But these bright colored regions are the regions that symbolize the light that is emitted by that particular atom. Now this is our absorption spectrum. It basically tells us the light that is absorbed for some particular atom. Now these bright regions are the regions that are not absorbed and these uh, dark regions are the regions that are absorbed by that particular atom. So once again, what exactly is a line spectrum of an atom? A line spectrum of an atom basically tells us the wavelength of light that is either emitted or absorbed by that that particular atom and each atom has its own unique line spectrum of wavelengths. Now, what exactly is the relationship between atomic structure and the line spectrum of an atom? So recall we previously said that in solids, liquids, and very dense gases, the electromagnetic radiation is released as a result of the interactions between close atoms, between atoms and molecules that are very close in proximity. So so basically, as a result of that, a range of wavelengths are produced and the spectrum is continuous. On the other hand, in low density, in rarefied gases, the atoms are found very far away and so the light is emitted by individual atoms and the spectrum will be discrete rather than continuous. So that basically implies that understanding where the line spectrum actually comes from and how this light is emitted is key to understanding the actual structure of the atom. So in a previous lecture we discussed the Rutherford model of the atom and it is basically described in the following diagram. So Rutherford basically described the atom consisting of a very condensed, very concentrated region of positive charge and orbiting this positive charge are electrons that orbit along the following circular pathway. Now what exactly is the flaw in this model? How exactly can we use the line spectra of atoms to basically disprove this model? Well the circular motion of the electron around the following concentrated region of positive charge creates acceleration. So the electron is accelerating around so it's producing electromagnetic radiation. Now because the acceleration is changing directions that means the electromagnetic radiation that is formed is formed with a very wide range of frequencies and that basically implies that this type of model will produce a continuous spectrum of colors but we know a single atom produces not a continuous line spectrum but a discrete line spectrum that is any given atom only emits or absorbs a certain particular wavelengths of light and that basically means that the Rutherford model cannot actually be an accurate description of what the atomic structure actually looks like.